So last night I went to the Mark Gonzalez Art Show in LA. It reminded me of a conversation I had with Dave Duncan, how Dave met Mark Gonzalez in 1985, how Dave Duncan became the Alva team manager, how Mark Gonzalez got on Alva, like all this interesting stuff about Mark Gonzalez that I never knew about. Did you know how people got sponsored in the 80s compared to how they got sponsored now? Could you imagine in the 80s trying to get sponsored? No Instagram, you don't have a phone, you can't afford a video camera. Like, how do you do it? Dave's gonna tell you about that. So Dave Duncan's the X Game Park Series, like he announces all these contests, Tampa Pro, Tampa Am, you name it, he's announced it. But he's got an interesting pro career behind it. I'll show you a bunch of the photos. And he also tells us how he became an announcer. So if you ever wanna be a skateboard announcer, he's gonna tell you how. You were talking about once you're pro and what you had to do. Well, yeah, you're asking me about how to turn pro. And uh, back then you, you really had to be out on the scene doing contests and demos with photographers and getting photos in the magazine doing good in contests and being marketable for some company, you know, to do it. And later in the 80s, because there's really no videos then, like Powell came out with videos, some of the companies had videos, Santa Cruz or GNS, but then you had to be on the team. So to get on a team later in the late 80s, early 90s, once H Street started, video cameras started coming around, that you didn't have to have really quality footage because like the Powell stuff was all like 16 millimeter, really expensive. So once video cameras became accessible, for everybody, kids could just go video themselves and make what they call a sponsor me tape of you skating around town with your buddies and show what you could do. And those sponsor me tapes eventually are what got people sponsored by companies who found talent all across the U.S. And back then, it was just mostly photos or just being on the scene. Also, it's really hard to get a video camera. Once it became affordable for families to have them for Christmas time or family videos, kids would grab it. Hey, let me go film my buddy skating or whatever. And that's sort of what they called sponsor me tapes kids started to show the companies that they and back then you rode the brand you want to get sponsored you want to get sponsored by Powell you rode Powell boards on uh, Mark Gonzalez being dyslexic whatever I'm dyslexic. I, I, I like the fact that he's dyslexic. Okay, cool. All right, sense. let's talk about that. Well, you were telling me he was dyslexic, so he couldn't concentrate in school, so he would doodle. Oh, how did he get on Alva? I used to love Alva. So I had the fish, and he was the first guy on Alva. So I was. And then he would see Gons down in Venice. I used to drive to Soy's house, and we'd go. I'd go up there to skate pools or Verde. He's like, we're going to Venice to street skate. So I'd go down to Soy down in Venice, and we'd launch ramps and do whatever the quarter pipe thing they had. And, Skating with Aaron Murray and Tim Jackson, all the, the Dogtown guys. It was super fun days. But then this kid, Mark Gonzalez, was always around with his crazy style, just street style, and just kind of like a street, almost like homeless kind of kid or whatever. He just was always around. I mean, he's a kid, a teenager. So Asoy hooks him up on Alva. Because before that, I heard I, he lived near Lance in Southgate. And I guess he used to get like a reflector or something out of the trash can of the factory or something. I don't know, sure grip, some weird stories of guns just scraping around to get by. Before he was sponsored. So, and I saw he hooks him up on Alva, which was rad, because now Gons is like the, the beginning of Street. And right around the same time, I remember seeing the first Powell video, which blew my mind, was to see Tommy Guerrero going down the streets in San Francisco, alling up curves. And it's like, we, we knew about all these, you know, but it was like, we we're just trying to figure it out. But to see somebody fly down the street uninterrupted and just flowing and alling up curves. I mean, that was amazing because we used to truck bash up the curbs and slow you down. This guy was just flying. So Gons was the best at that stuff, all in, and he would ollie off picnic benches and big stuff. And uh, Gons just had that style. Bonelesses were coming in. He was just loose. Gons had a really loose, rad style. I remember being in one of those NSA contests in San Diego. I had to compete against him, like 85, we were amateur still. And he ollied a freaking tire. It just came out of nowhere flat. And it was a huge truck tire, like one of those big, big ass tires. And uh, I mean, people were learning to ollie up curbs in, and then he takes the next level, just ollies a freaking tire. Like, that's just cons. Anyways, uh, he could rip vert, he could rip mini ram, he'd do eggplants on vert, did all these crazy, like, street plant stuff with me. But Gons actually would do that on vert. I even remember seeing Tommy Guerrero ride vert, not Nottis, but because but, uh, Nottis was part of the street thing. But to see Tommy Guerrero and, and Gons be on vert and, like, all terrain, that was rad because, you know, it was the beginning of street skating, but vert was a big thing in the early 80s. So it's just rad that Gons went to, he was trying to get pro on Alva, I think, and we just weren't sure, like, there was no such thing as a street pro. 
and we're like, ah, you need to kind of get out there a little more. And him and Neil Blender neither, because they just didn't, their brain didn't work that way. And they would just go out and do weird shit, art, real artistic. And that's the thing. I heard about Gons in, in, in school, and he wasn't good in school. He got bad grades because he couldn't pay attention. He's kind of dyslexic, kind of what they call on the spectrum nowadays. And, you know, but he was amazing on the streets. He knew the streets, and he could, you know, deal with people and make his way through the world. And now, between all the doodling that he used to do when he was in school, he's so bored, he would doodle, and he would just, he took his art to another level with doing his own graphics, and now being an artist in New York City and worldwide, it just, he's super famous. And I try to tell my friends, just because your kid is dyslexic or some weird, doesn't mean that they um, don't have any value. You just got to find their strengths and what they're good at. You know, Gons is a great skateboarder, great artist, and look at him now, he's doing great. He made a great life for himself, even though in school, they're like, you're going to be a failure, you're never going to be anything. You know, all you do is fool around with that skateboard. There's no future in that. Don't listen to what your teachers tell you. Like, you don't have to be good in math or, or history or writing, whatever. Like, just do whatever you're good at. Find your way in the world. That's what I love about skateboarding is the interesting, unique personalities of people. Everybody's unique in their own way. A lot of them come from broken homes. I'm sure Gons probably had a broken home, whatever. He's out on the streets as a kid. And uh, that's a big skateboard. It's our own new family, International Brotherhood, where we just take care of each other. So, uh um, yeah, just go out there, have fun, keep skating. There what happened go. after Alba? Oh, the Alba, so he went to Vision. We weren't sure what to do with him, and I guess in, in between those talks, Vision just scooped him up. Dude, I'll take Gons and we'll get him, make him famous, whatever. We were ready to give him a model. We was right there. Back in the 80s, they made you wait a while until you build your name up. You know, you want to stay amateur, dominate, and Gons just didn't want to do that. He's like, no, I, want to, I think I'm good enough to be pro. Yeah, so we went to Vision, and the rest is history. Did those own graphics, and Vision was blown up back in those days. And uh, congratulations to God. Saw, saw his way through and uh, traveled the world being a pro skateboarder. The rest is history. I remember going to Europe in 87 on a Thrasher tour. It was Gons and Gator were on it, and Lance and Cab were on it with Soy. I mean, it was a legendary tour. Ross Cop was on that one, too. Pat Noho, we had a, a great time. Just one month all over Europe with Mofo on the trains. No contest, uh, no real scheduled demos. We just show up in a skate park or show up at a ramp and just put on a show and have our fun. and maybe let a few locals know we were there but that was a really amazing time uh, summer of 87 check your thrashers for the history on that one okay um talk to me well how'd you get into announcing and who, um, who have you what companies have you announced for like oh, so yeah was, i got you i got you let's go um so back in the 80s when i was doing castle 83 84 i used to judge the beginner intermediate advanced kids that weren't sponsored because i was in the sponsor for like 50 bucks, go to Upland for the weekend and uh, give 50 bucks for gas money, food money, whatever. Just judging the kids. And Bo Brown was, Bo Brown was a, uh, like our small racer for Madrid. And he was the announcer. And I would listen to him. And he just didn't have as much knowledge about the guys and tricks. I'm skating with them the night before. I know their lines. I know their personality and funny stuff about them. So I'm like, hey, I think I could do that if you ever need help. And he goes, please. And he just hand me the mic. He goes, dude, I'm just volunteering here. Like, please, you know, go ahead. So thank you, Bo. Um, and then uh, I started doing the amateur stuff. And then KT was doing the pro stuff. So I did Savannah Slamma. They hired me to build the ramps. And then uh, back to the city, San Francisco, some Thrasher stuff. And then KT eventually goes, here, Duncan, you do it. Because I was starting to do other events with uh, NSA, which was Sonia Catalano, Frank Hawk, which Sonia did Castle, and then Frank did NSA. So I was kind of already in there with it. Plus, I was building a lot of ramps. With Tim Payne, he was the main guy. We'd have to go on arena and build brand new for ramp street courses in like a week or whatever. So I'd help a lot with that. And they're like, you're already here building ramps. Can you judge for us or now so we don't have to fly another guy? We're on tight budgets. Pay for another airfare hotel to fly in someone else. So that started then. Eventually, it turned into World Cup skateboarding. We were doing stuff in Europe, a lot, France, Spain. I was building ramps all over. There was places too. And... Uh, and then X Games came around 95, and I felt really weird the first couple of X Games because like, there's headphones on and cable cams. It was crazy big time. But I was confident because I'm like, dude, I'm a hardcore skateboarder or whatever, even though this is kind of glitzy, glammy, made-for-TV skateboarding, you know, big TV show. I figured after a few years they'd get it better because it was pretty corny the first few years. And it seemed like by 99 when Hawk did his big 900, that's when X Games was like legit. Bob Bernquist was ripping and, you know, Danny Way was in there, Colin McKay, like a lot of progressive rad dudes were ripping. So skateboarding was really changing a lot in those days. Anyways, uh, yeah, so then we did. Also, I did a lot for Vance Triple Crowns. 
and then it would turn into the Gravity Games, it would turn into the Doom Tour, so I did like 20 years of X Games and almost the same for all those. And stuff all over the world, Brazil, Canada, Japan, I don't know, all over, Australia. World Cup Skateboarding is what it's called right now. So. Cool, I think that's perfect. There we go, we're done. Okay, favorite skater, and you started in the 80s. 70, well, 70 would be Tony Elmo oh, J. Adams and shit. And that's what influenced me, you know, I mean, they were my favorite, I looked up to them. Okay, if you like that, you can check more of Dave Duncan, or if you want to go into Steve Cavallaro's house and see what he's got, right here. Honey, what's for dinner? <laughs>